Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. In our last video, I introduced several podcasts prepared this summer by Michael and Anastasia, then released on their channel, Between Two Aliens. If you have not viewed these podcasts, take the time to listen. You will gain significant insight relative to the problems discussed on Sky Scholar, including my philosophy relative to paradigm shifts in science. In addition to the podcast, I also provided links to all my recorded lectures and interviews below that video. Michael and Anastasia keep producing excellent material. If you have not seen their latest release on the misconceptions about science, I urge you to have a look. The video is linked below. Now, after I completed the podcast series, Michael sent me a link to this paper, which he wanted me to examine. Here is what he wrote. Some of our audience has been asking about this mirroring imbalance with the sun. I know you made some mention of the reason why gamma rays explode orthogonally, but I am hoping you can clarify that explanation for me. Here is the article. In this podcast, I had addressed the problem of gamma ray production in association with powerful flares. I had also discussed the problem in this video. The production of a gamma ray in association with a flare is actually one of the proofs for a real solar surface. Let's take a moment to view what was said in that video. High energy flares produce their powerful gamma rays in a manner that these end up being emitted nearly tangentially to the solar surface, as shown in this little figure. You will notice that as the flare crosses the solar surface, gamma rays are almost perpendicular to the flare direction. Any gamma ray produced when the flare is on the limb, therefore has a chance of being viewed from Earth. You can think of these as emitting in a cone-like fashion near the surface, at the base of the flare. If the flare occurs at the center of the disk, any rays emitted from the cone move away from the detector on Earth and therefore cannot be detected. As such, high energy flares seem to produce gamma rays only when they are at the limb of the Sun. This is simply a question of being able to detect the rays from our position. In order to account for the production of these gamma rays, solar physicists invoke magnetic mirroring of electrons, which descend upon the photosphere from the corona and thereby provide the needed energy. They place the required hypothetical mirror near the level of the photosphere. In this way, they once again create an imaginary surface instead of insisting that a real one is actually present. But the most important conclusion from such observation is that flare production is demonstrating an interaction with a real surface, not an imaginary one. It is not necessary to bring energy from the corona, as a solar surface contains more than enough energy given its powerful convection currents. In this respect, Note that atoms which make up the flare are traveling perpendicular to the solar surface, but the surface also has differential motion, as seen in this figure. As such, while the flare is occurring, surface atoms are colliding with flare atoms. This is because their direction of motions is perpendicular to one another. The energy dissipated in the flare are manifestations of these powerful collisions, which are revealing that the solar surface is concealing tremendous energy in its convection currents. Notice how the astronomers account for flare-associated gamma ray production. They claim that the electrons from the corona are being mirrored by an imaginary surface at the level of the photosphere, and that once that occurs, gamma rays are being produced. They use an imaginary surface and magnetic fields to help make up for the fact that a gaseous sun has no surface. Conversely, I stated that as flare material moves away from the solar surface, it is being struck by photospheric material, which is moving within the surface in a manner which is orthogonal to the flare direction. It is the collision of these two masses which results in powerful gamma ray production. This is a reflection of the tremendous energy contained in the translational degrees of freedom in the solar photosphere. In any event, the paper Michael brought to my attention is not addressing flares. It is examining the types of gamma ray production across the entire solar disk independent of flare activity. 
The paper is concerned with the hard excess of giga electron volt gamma ray flux from the Sun. The paper is interesting not only because it highlights important observations, but also because it serves to underscore how far astronomers will have to reach to save the standard model of the Sun. In order to appreciate what I am discussing, let's return for a brief moment to an overview of the standard model as I discussed long ago in the second video ever released on this channel. In the standard model, gamma rays are being produced by nuclear reactions which can only occur in the core of the Sun. The core is hypothesized to have a density of about 150 grams per centimeter cubed and a temperature of about 15 million Kelvin. Once produced in the core, gamma rays are thought to slowly leak out of the Sun as they traverse the radiative and convective zones over the span of hundreds of thousands or perhaps millions of years. In the standard model, no nuclear reactions take place outside the core. The Sun focuses almost exclusively on the production of helium using PP reactions and the CNO cycle. But as I mentioned in the past, Astronomers have crippled our Sun with their standard model. In that model, the Sun cannot make all the elements, so to account for the production of elements heavier than helium, they postulate that first generation stars existed. Those stars made those elements and the Sun simply captured them as it formed. Talk about crippling our Sun. It is unreasonable to hypothesize that the Sun cannot make all the elements when we can achieve the task easily on Earth with our accelerators. Again, this is a consequence of outdated hypotheses which are well over a hundred years old. So now we have a problem because when the standard model of the Sun was proposed, the amount of gamma rays it produces had never been measured. That is a result from the last few decades of science. So how do the astronomers account for the production of these gamma rays if they cannot be produced in the standard model by nuclear reactions? Well, they turn again to the mirroring idea we just saw above and hypothesize that the Sun is a steady emitter of multi giga electron volt gamma rays. Cosmic rays are said to approach the Sun from a galactic source. Once they reach the Sun, they are mirrored away from it and when this occurs, gamma rays are said to be produced. But the problem is that even this magical mechanism can only account for one seventh of the total gamma rays coming off the solar disk, according to their own paper. What next? Yes, you guessed it, the answer must come from dark matter and that is exactly what the paper proposes. So now dark matter must come to the rescue not only of the Big Bang, but of the Sun itself. Conversely, I have previously stated that nuclear reactions can occur throughout the body of the Sun. PP reactions occur within the hexagonal planes and a wide array of heteronuclear reactions can occur in the intercalate zones as I first proposed in this paper and video. The key is to admit that lattice confinement fusion is real as we learnt in this video. That will greatly lower the temperatures required for nuclear reactions to occur. Lattice confinement fusion is very likely to occur on the surface of the Sun and that generates the gamma rays. Dark matter is not needed to account for gamma ray production as it is a desperate attempt to save the dying standard solar model. Interestingly, the paper Michael communicated reveals that gamma ray production off the surface of the Sun is strongly anti-correlated with solar activity, especially at the higher energies as one can see in this figure. That is extremely interesting and may support the idea that during solar activity, the lattice structure of the photosphere is being disrupted by the degassing activity associated with the intercalate regions. If the lattice is being disrupted, then one might expect a decrease in the rate of surface associated lattice confinement fusion. Once again, you can learn more about this in this video. Solar physicists are reaching for mysticism in trying to account for the production of gamma rays by the solar disk. The invocation of dark matter acts as a warning sign that the standard model of the Sun is in real trouble. 
For this reason, let us refer to the gamma ray production problem as the 40-second line of evidence that the Sun is comprised of condensed matter. The first 40 proofs were given in this paper, and the 41st is the hydrogen phase diagram itself as seen in this video. If anyone comes up with an aspect of the Sun which has not been addressed, do bring it to my attention. Perhaps it will be the 43rd line of evidence for a liquid Sun, and one of my viewers will be the discoverer. Well that is all for now. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the videos to your friends and to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the Sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.